Right, cheers, cheers, man. Cheers. So this is um, the topic we're going to talk about today is a recommendation from our camera assistant who doesn't want us to use her name in public. Fair enough. Yeah. But she was talking about um, games we played in elementary school and like what elementary school was like growing up yeah. overseas versus Japan. But have you, so have you had any interaction with elementary school students? Here in Japan, no. Okay. No, I, uh, I primarily work with high school students and junior yeah. high school students. Yeah. Um, so, I, okay, I shouldn't say I haven't had any interaction. So the only interaction that I have is entrance exams mm -hmm. um, or uh, sets of eye. So okay. like the kind of like open school events mm -hmm. where like families and kids will come. Yeah. Um, and uh, what I have found when dealing with elementary mm -hmm. school students is uh, I feel really bad for elementary school teachers. Really? Oh, for teachers? Yeah. Oh, why? Their job sounds so hard. Because <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you, uh, entrance exams are fine. Because yeah. when the sixth graders come and take entrance exams to get mm. into my school, uh, it was actually crazy. We had a thousand students come. Wow. Um, last entrance ex entrance exam, which it was a practice exam back in November. Okay. We're gonna have another one in February. Mm -hmm. Thousand students. I think it's actually twelve hundred students are gonna be coming to my school. Wow. It's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways, uh, those those are fine because the kids are all nervous, so they'll mm -hmm. listen to whatever you say because they just don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah, right. But. When it's the open school event, mm -hmm. like they're a lot more casual about things because mm -hmm. they know that it doesn't really matter what they do here. Okay. And so it's actually kind of hard to control the group sometimes because, mm -hmm. like, sometimes the kids will just like go off and do mm -hmm. their own thing. And it's like, try getting a child to like sit down and pay attention for 30 minutes is yeah, like right. pretty difficult. So yeah. I have a lot of respect for elementary school okay. uh, teachers. So for you, though, what was so you and I, we kind of grew up in two different worlds, right? Yeah. So up until second grade, so in um, in in the states, elementary school is five years, right? It's fifth grade elementary school for you. Six. No, no, no. no fifth no, grade is elementary school, yeah, but also sixth grade is really because yeah. for me, sixth grade was middle school. Really? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, fifth grade was my last year of international school. Well, so I went to um, so when I um, oh, okay. So the difference is, you went to middle school. I went to junior high. Is there a difference? There is a difference. What, what, what is the difference? So Tell middle me, school sir. is six, seven, eight. Junior high is seven, eight, nine. Really? Yes. This is the first time I'm hearing this. Really? I'm 31, and this is the first <laughs> time I'm. I thought there was no difference. Just, there is a difference. Why? Like that doesn't make any sense. Like, like you should just have it. Like everyone. Man, so you went to okay. Yeah. So there's a difference between junior high. In middle school, yeah, I'm. I was today years old when I figured well, that out. Well, Arthur, uh, you know it's really great. I'm an English teacher. I can I can teach yeah, you. Please I teach can teach you about ways. American culture. Yeah, please teach me. <laughs> I'm I'm foreign born, so I can't be president of the United States. Um, but yeah, so like so up until second grade, I was in Germany, mm. and I went to international school for the first few years of school, and then I went to school in a small town north of Boston. Yeah, um, for third grade and fourth grade. And then I went to a private Christian school for fifth grade. Wow. Through middle school. But it wasn't like one of the high class ones. It yeah. was more of like, like you want to send your kids to a good school, but you don't have so much money. So it was like a private school in one of the poor areas that yeah. I went to. But yeah, so our uniform was just like t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I still have one of the t-shirts oh, actually man, that's here. That's so ghetto. <laughs> Yeah, I know. The t-shirts with the school logo on it. But it's funny because actually yeah. I have one of the t-shirts now as an exercise shirt that I can still use today because I was so much fatter back like <laughs> in middle school. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So um, but what was your experience in school? So, so actually very similar to you, but okay. instead of moving locations, mm -hmm. um, I moved around in... Uh, I guess it would, it, I would I would categorize it as class structure. Okay. So, um, when I started going to elementary school, I went to school in um, I don't remember the school district, but regardless, it was it was kind of like a lower end school mm -hmm, district, mm -hmm. and it was like kind of like 
I wouldn't so, say poor kids, but sh- like, should we talk about like the school district system in the United States? Because that's different from Japan. Is it? Right. I think so. It, so in Japan, I guess from Chugakukara you can change, but like in yeah. America, elementary school, middle school, or junior high, yeah, or high school, you have to be in the town. Yeah, that you live that's, in. that's what I thought because I I know I know junior high here in Japan, like yeah. typically you'll, you'll like try to choose specific schools to go into, and it's yeah. usually to schools that are related to the high school that you want to go to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you were saying, in in America, it's like even all the way through high school, it's yeah. it's literally you're going to the the district that you're paying taxes to right yeah so a lot of a lot of families in america will move to a location that has a good school because that's the school that they can send their kids to for free yeah you know yeah that's exactly um so uh the the place that i lived is uh the the school district was kind of poor okay it was i wouldn't say it was poor but it was like definitely lower end Mm -hmm. um because uh so this was like, do you know Mount Lake Terrace? Do you know yeah, like Mount Lake Terrace. Yeah. yeah. So it was like that school district. Oh, okay. It was like Linwood, Linwood yeah, yeah, School Linwood. District. Um, and so I started going to an elementary school there, and most of the kids were from like low income families mm-hmm. there. Wait, did you used and, to live in, in Linwood? No. But uh, I lived in, so I, I've always lived in Bothell, um, which is like a really small town mm-hmm. near Seattle. Um, but the the area that we lived in was like just like on the edge of mm-hmm. like Linwood School District. Okay, so um, it was like right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where the bus would always take you. Okay. Um. So I I remember um going to that school and mm-hmm. like like I said, most of the kids were like from like low income families. Mm-hmm. Like one of my really good friends growing up was like. He lived right next to the school. His mm-hmm. his family was like super poor. I think his parents are actually homeless yeah. now. It's actually wow. kind of sad. Um, but um, yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. I grew up with those like that kind of people, mm-hmm. and um, my mom was like really against that. Mm-hmm. She wanted me to go to a better school, so mm-hmm. she actually pulled me out, and we went to North Shore School District, which is North like Shore. if okay. you if you know Seattle, North Shore is like one of the high end school districts. So what? So like what area is North Shore? Because so North Shore, so the high school is Inglemore. If you know, if you know Inglemore, Inglemore, like do you know Kenmore? Kenmore, I know Kenmore, okay. yeah. So Kenmore and Inglemore are like right next to each other. Dude. But like Inglemore is like really rich people Dude, area. I just I just gotta tell you something. So I'm probably because we've already <laughs> been drinking this, but I'm so confused now because yeah, I live in the North Shore of like the area I live in is called the North Shore. <laughs> North Shore. And there's it's a completely different place. And there's an area in Boston called Kenmore, which is where the, really? the like the Red Sox <laughs> really. So so I'm just like Kenmore, do you know Kenmore? I'm like, Oh yeah, I know. Wait, no, we're talking about Okay. So That's this is funny. like so so tell me about like this this area called Kenmore. So Kenmore is actually a really poor area. Okay. Like really poor. And when I'm talking about poor, I'm not talking about like inner city poor. I'm mm-hmm. talking about like, kind of like poor like for ba- lack of a better way, like poor white people okay. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um like you there's trailer parks there. Yeah. Uh there it's a lot of forests, like mm-hmm. it's really low income apartments, that yeah. kind of thing. Um and but next to that is Inglemore, which is actually separated by a bridge. Yeah, and it's on the other side of Lake Washington from it. Okay. Um, but the bro, they're both on the tip of Lake Washington. Okay. So and like on the north side. Yeah. Okay. And Inglemore is like the exact opposite. It's mm-hmm. like super super rich people area. Yeah. And um, so my my mom wanted me to go to North Shore. Okay. So she pulled me out of school when I was in third grade mm-hmm. and put me in uh put me in North Shore School District. So I swapped elementary schools halfway okay. through. And the experience was really different. Yeah. Um, so I remember... <laughs> so when, back when I was going to like the poor school, yeah. um, I remember uh, I like my one of my first memories is I had a girlfriend in second grade. Okay. Right? And in I second would, grade, how cute. Yeah, I know, right? It's like one of those elementary school yeah. like relationships where yeah. it's like you guys don't really know what like boys and girls are supposed to but do together. Like each other. But yeah. you just you just like play together. Yeah. You know? Um and uh so I had a girlfriend and I remember there was this kid uh who transferred to our school. He's from he's actually from Ukraine. Mm-hmm. And um he was so popular mm-hmm. because he was different. Yeah, right. Like you know, That's it's how like it always is, man. He he had this accent, like he was tall, 
Like all all the girls in my class liked him, and, and including my girlfriend at the time, and it really irritated me. Okay. So, like, I was so fed up with it one day that um, I'm I'm ashamed to admit this, but it's actually kind of funny. Um, I was so fed up with it, so I I I took my backpack and I put like school books in my backpack. Yeah. And we we finished school one day, and I walked up to him and just hit him with my what? backpack. Yeah. <laughs> So, no, I was really? so I was done with it. I was I was done with man. this. I was done with this charm. I was done with it. I wasn't having man, any of it. Man, you violent Irish dude. <laughs> no. Seriously. So so I hit him with my backpack, and we got into this huge fight. And when I say huge fight, it's like two second graders yeah. fighting each other, right? Yeah. Um. But uh, I got what's called an in school suspension because okay, of yeah. it. And so what that is is like. Normally during a suspension or a suspension, you're not allowed to come to the school. Mm-hmm. But in school, it's like I had to spend all day in the school office. Yeah. With the principal. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it gets worse. Yeah. Um. So, uh, one of my neighbors comes in. Yeah. And my my neighbor, I know them really well because usually, like, I would get babysat by them mm-hmm. uh, when my parents were out, and uh, their their daughters all went to the school okay. also. And so I, I, I'm really familiar with them. And I know mm-hmm. like, uh, it was my neighbor and her husband that, uh, I, I know. Um, and so she comes in and she's like picking up her daughter and, uh, <laughs> I wish I never made this statement, but, um, she comes in she's like, Oh, sorry, I'm here to pick up my daughter. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm late. I told, I told you I was going to come at noon, but you know, it's one o'clock right now. Um, and I'm just like, or she's like, yeah, my husband was supposed to pick her up, but he he was busy today. Mm-hmm. And you know, I know her husband, and he guy's a construction worker. Okay, you know, he works really hard, but it's like my memories of him is like sitting in front of the TV in his underwear, yeah. drinking beer. Yeah, and so that's what I said. I'm like, oh yeah, he's probably busy drinking beer in his underwear, oh, watching man. TV, and like the entire office just unanimously Dude. looked at me in, in shock in horror because like they didn't know that i knew her really well yeah and so she's like laughing about like dude you're so screwed now <laughs> like yeah, you right. shouldn't have said that yeah um so she thought it was funny but like the entire office including mm-hmm. the principal heard that and yeah. they're just like you are just a troublemaker yeah you know and uh so <laughs> it was like right at yeah, yeah it was right at that moment that i think my mom kind of realized like oh maybe this school's not the best influence yeah, right. on this guy so right. so um i transferred into an elementary school in fourth grade okay and uh i didn't know anybody yeah and that is like horrifying as yeah, a right. child as a child going in especially in fourth grade so it's like you're like almost done with elementary school mm-hmm. at that point yeah i transferred right? schools in fourth grade too it yeah. it sucks having to make friends again. Yeah, because everyone's <laughs> already made their friends. You know, they've been yeah. together for years, but then you're like the the alien coming in. Mm-hmm. You know, I get that. Yeah, and I, it's there's just so many small things um, mm-hmm. that matter so much in elementary school. Like I remember, um, I, I'm I you know what I I have no shame, so I'll I'll tell this story. <laughs> okay. Um, so I remember in fourth grade yeah. something that was really embarrassing is uh. I remember there was, uh, we, were, we were having a presentation in class and our teacher was talking, I, I forget what the subject was, but there was a lot of sound mm-hmm. and we were watching some videos. Mm-hmm. And I remember all of a sudden there was complete silence mm-hmm. in the classroom. And I, I think it's because like the... This was at the time, like, before we had, like, YouTube and everything, mm-hmm. right? So the teacher had to, like, swap out VHS. And at the time, it was completely silent. Mm-hmm. And it just so happened right at that moment that I farted. No! In fourth grade? In fourth grade. Dude, I have a story to tell you after this. <laughs> Keep on going. So, so I, I farted okay. right, right when that happened. And it was pure silence. And everyone in the class heard it. And they okay. immediately looked at me like it, it was there was no there was no question of yeah. who was the one who did it. And I was so embarrassed by yeah. it that I actually like went into the bathroom and like okay. hid for like 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. So like my my experience like in fourth grade was horrible, dude. I, I just <laughs> I just need to share. Maybe this is one of the reasons why we're brothers kind of yeah. but like. So so I had kind of a similar situation to you. So I moved from Germany to 
um, the States in third grade. I go to a really s- local school. Yeah. And people are like, oh, you're from Germany. Are you a Nazi? And I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not even I'm, German. I'm not even German. They're like, but you come from Germany, right? I'm like, yeah, but I'm not German. <laughs> why do you speak English so good? Because I'm American. <laughs> then why are you from Germany? And it's just like, it was really weird. So, but then, so we were living at my my grandparents' house at that time. But then yeah. my parents found a house yeah. in the in another town. So for fourth grade, I moved yeah. to a new school, <laughs> and there was a kid who lived on the street that we were going to move to. Yeah, his name was Nick mm-hmm. Roth, and uh, he's the beginning of like so much trauma in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> so like at, in um so in fourth grade at my, at my school, so like in in my hometown. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. It's okay. Do you, oh, do you, need, a, do you need a tissue? No, I'm you okay. Got tissues for I'm you. okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> no. Um. So. So in my in my hometown, we had like one high school, two middle schools, and like four elementary schools. Yeah. And now there's like two elementary schools because like birth rate, whatever. Yeah. But um, so I went to one of the elementary schools, and I I moved in just like you. I didn't know anyone. Yeah. And I was just making friends, and this guy Nick was living on my street, so I figured, oh, I'll try to be friends with him. And so in um, in um, first mistake, first mistake, seriously. <laughs> um, so in in our fourth grade class, every like day or so, we would have this um period called math baseball, which was oh, like that's weird, which was like a like a game that kind of resembled baseball. But it was done with math on paper. Like I don't know how it worked anymore. Even, but it was called math baseball to make it sound more interesting. But oh yeah, so just one thing to just to remind people if they don't know how the school system works in America. So in America, normally um, in elementary school, you have one teacher that teaches all of the subjects. Yeah, and you're in the same room the whole time, so yes. you don't have different teachers. Nope. You're just the same person, except for the PE teacher. Except for the That's PE the only teacher. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you go to the gym for that. Yep. Um. But yeah, so we were playing math baseball, and me and Nick, we were off in the corner of the room doing our ma- math baseball game, and it was just two of us, and people kind of far away from us. And Nick farts so loud, and everyone turns and looks at us, and I'm looking at Nick, and Nick's like looking at me. He doesn't know what to do, and then he goes, Oh, Arthur! <laughs> Oh my God! He just threw you under the bus. Seriously, and so so after that day, I had the reputation of being the farter. So I would walk, (laughs) I would walk through the hallways, and kids I didn't even know would go like, "Oh, Arthur!" As I was walking down the the hallway, man, like it got around the whole school. No kids would play with me because I was the fart boy, even though I didn't. It was Nick that did that. And I, I remember, like, I remember, um, this was really traumatizing for me, but I'm glad we could talk about it now. <laughs> Dude, so I this had, is like, like a therapy session. Seriously, <laughs> I, so I had, like, one friend yeah. who um, we would hang out, we would talk during recess, and, um, you know, we would do field trips where we'd go hiking or something, yeah. we'd go out in nature, and we would, we would hang out and we would talk. And I remember one time on the recess field, he's like, hey, Arthur, I got to talk to you about something. I'm like, what's up? And he's like... Hey, dude, I can't be friends with you anymore because people make fun of me because I hang out with you. And I'm like, what? Really? And so like, so like, like I lost my one friend because he was like, oh yeah, kids make fun of me because I'm, I'm, I hang out with you. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's terrible, but okay. <laughs> and you know, you know, what's really funny though, is like, so, so because I had such a traumatic experience, my parents moved me to that private school. I talked yeah. about from middle school. And then I remember in, um, in ninth grade for high school, I went back to that same school district. Yeah. And I saw all the kids from um that bullied me in the past. Yeah. And they didn't even really remember me. They're like, Oh yeah, you were that weird kid who like was there for a year and then you're gone, now you're back. Hey, what's up? I'm like, you don't remember what happened? They're like, Yeah, well, I mean we made fun of you a little bit, but yeah, I don't remember too much. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like scarred <laughs> big time from this, you know. Dude, it's it's so funny how that's so true though. Yeah. Like people like traumatic events yeah. will happen. And then you'll you'll like meet somebody that that like you know was there during the time that that happened at the yeah. school, and it's like yeah, I mean that happened, but who cares? Yeah, right. Whatever. We're junior high students now, so it's like. Have you have you witnessed like izume or bullying in your in your school? Oh God, yes. Dude, can you tell me about that? Because I know it's bad, but I don't know details about so, that. So, um, I I I will go off and state 
first of all, you don't really experience it in high school here in Japan, Mm -hmm. which it's actually kind of interesting because um, I think bullying is like a really big thing in high school in America. Really? Because I had the... (laughs) I had the opposite experience. Oh, really? Like I thought, like the bullying really happens in like middle school or elementary school. Yeah, I think it's. I think it like definitely happens in elementary school. I think it's most prevalent in middle school, but I think it it depends on probably it depends on where you live. Okay. Um, but it definitely happens in high school. Uh, not my high school though, because I was at a private school. Yeah, right. It was all nerds, so like you're gonna yeah. get bullied by some kid who's good at math. Like, yeah, come right. On. You can't do calculus. <laughs> <laughs> I got an A in my class. You, 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 you got a B minus. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, here in Japan, you don't you don't see bullying at all in high school. Okay, like just no one cares. Really? Okay. Um, like everyone's busy studying and getting ready for college. Like mm-hmm. even in first year of high school. Um, but in in junior high. Mm. Especially, so this is, uh, my school's transferring to an international school. And yeah. we're, we're co-ed from next year. So I, I don't have any experience with boys. Mm-hmm. But girls are horrible. Yeah. They are so mean to each other. It, like, so uh, here's an example, okay. right? So this was, this was several years ago. Actually, the class that I'm talking about is graduating in March. Okay. Um, they're, they're my homeroom class. Okay. And, uh. This was back when they were, uh, was it Chuichi? Yeah, it was Chuichi. Chuichi okay. So they were, they were junior high, so this would be seventh graders, mm-hmm. right? So they're seventh graders. So all the girls are like 11, 12 mm-hmm. years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one girl in the class, with, you know, this might be mean to say, but thank God she, she transferred to schools okay. when she went to high school because she was... Oh God, she was just the most horrible human being I've ever met okay. in my life. Okay. Um, and uh, so she, there was this one girl in class, and she was obsessed with ranking the like students. The, the students, okay. Yeah. So, uh, she posted on Twitter mm-hmm. a ranking of the prettiest girls in class. Okay. And just publicly like attached that or. I don't know how Twitter works, but she she like made it so the entire school can see it. Okay. So I guess she like added my school, yeah, or whatever. Um, she made it so the entire school could see, yeah. And it was like, here's here's the prettiest girl in class, here's the ugliest girl in class, and okay. just like full on, just a one page Microsoft Word document, okay, <laughs> and just posted that. Wow. And it's like, dude, that is like some mentally scarring stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Especially like, if you're like the last one. Yeah, so it's like when it when it comes to like boys versus girls mm-hmm. at that age, it's like I'd I'd much rather be a boy because like at the worst, if you're a boy, like you just get in a fight and get yeah. beat up and did, it's did done. You get fights in school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like nothing after after that one incident in second yeah. grade, like nothing nothing like that I got in trouble over. Okay. okay. But it's like you get in like you know altercations, like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, being you, a boy. You, you get sometimes like yeah. you rough them up a bit. Yeah. You know. Actually, so speaking about that, like, actually, probably one of the reasons why I had such a bad reputation in school was um, because I I took the high road. Oh, really? So, yeah, because I was like, there was this one kid in my school. His name was Mike Eller. I think he's like, he got some girl pregnant or something, never went to college or something like that. Okay. Um, But um, even back when when we were in fourth grade together, he was a pretty troubled kid. Like, you know how, like, in, um, in high school, you have, like, the druggies who like go behind the school and yeah. smoke pot yeah, and yeah. stuff like he he was one of those oh things, okay right? but this was back in elementary school before all that um but um <laughs> I, I was making a joke and like people were laughing and he's like arthur it's not funny stop it and i'm like no i'm just gonna do it anyways because it's funny because i like making jokes he's like shut the f- up and i'm just like no i'm not he's like you want to go you want to go I'm like yeah i want to go and i'm like because this kid was short too and I, I could totally take this kid like i knew i could beat, beat the crap out of this kid right <laughs> Like it was no contest. Yeah. Um. And so what ended up happening is, so my my teacher was out of the room for like twenty minutes. Yeah. And um, he uh, so that was when this altercation happened. So so Mike was like, "You want to go? You want to go?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever. I can I can beat the crap out of you, man. You're like this tall on me." So so we get to the front of the class and everyone's like cheering, like, "Go go go go! Mm. Yeah, beat the blah, blah, blah. right." And at that moment. I have like a mind shift where I'm like, you know what, dude, this is stupid. I'm not going to fight you. Like, this isn't going to solve anything. I just, it was weird. I just changed right there in front of everyone. 
And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, I'm not going to fight you, man. You can hit me if you want, but I'm not going to fight you. He's like, what? So he like hits me in the face. Yeah. And then he starts kicking me while I'm on the floor and I'm not doing anything because like, I didn't want to fight. And he's like, oh yeah, whatever, you wussy. Like, you're not even going to fight back, you little blah, blah, blah. And then the teacher comes in and stuff, but I let him beat me up. And so I guess like from there, people were like, oh yeah, this kid doesn't fend for himself or whatever. But like- Dude, you're screwed. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, super screwed, right? <laughs> Yeah, but I was just like, no, if I really went, I could, like, kill this kid. I didn't want to do that, you know? Yeah. So, like, I just let him beat me up instead, and then that ruined my <laughs> reputation in school. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not proud to admit this, but I was, yeah. I was a bully. I was a bit of a bully, too, when I was yeah. younger, too. I was, throughout, throughout elementary school, and I, I think part of that was, um, moving to a new school yeah so i tried to like act tough yeah you're like yeah i mean that's you know? kind of how i, I was yeah. in the beginning you know um so like going to, going to our new school like i i did i just tried to pick on anybody who was, who well, was like lesser status than me just to try and elevate myself well dude i mean so like so when you get it so one of the reasons why i'm really happy working by myself is i don't have to do deal with like the workplace yeah. politics and crap like that right because yeah. you know if you go to school Mm -hmm. if you go to jail yeah if you go to work and you're interacting with all these people yeah there are people who try to set this peck order this hierarchy and oh definitely i mean you remember when you and i like i first came into the school and like there was this one guy who was trying to like raise seniority over me and trying to put me in my place and i didn't yeah. let him yeah. but then when i met you and you had your mask down and like it was below yeah. your nose. I'm like, dude, you got to put your mask up. That was me trying to like assert my <laughs> position over you. I'm like, I'm not going to let this guy manhandle me. I'm going to. I'm your senpai. You, you're you not allowed to like tell me to put my mask no, no, on. No, no, no. I, I know that. I know that. But it's like, it's it's funny how those dynamics work. And it even yeah, works yeah, that yeah, way yeah. in middle school. No, you know? I know. I know. It's just, it never, like adults are really just big babies. They like, are. Hey, you, so, so, you know, it's, it's really funny. So there's this, there's this band that I, that I really like that I, I used to listen to when I was a high school student. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Bowling for Soup? Yeah. Bowling for Soup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they have a song that's called High School Never Ends. Do you know that song? Yeah, I've I haven't heard that one. So so it's high school never ends. And basically, the the gist of the song is, yeah, you guys graduated high school, but like we're all still high schoolers. Yeah, you know what I mean. We're all still like emotional people who care about whatever, yeah, like what other people think and everything. And I I really think that's true. Yeah, like you can be you can be forty five years old and. You'll still care about what other people think. You'll care about your image, like especially as a man. Like mm -hmm. you're probably balding at that point, yeah. so you're like really self conscious or uh, self conscious. I like, I'm super drunk now. You're self conscious of your your image at mm -hmm. that point, and so you're like trying to compensate by like buying stuff. Yeah. Um. And it, it it's just funny because I I think it's completely true. Yeah. Um. And it's just like your experiences through through especially I would say elementary school and junior high mm -hmm. really shape who you are as a person. Yeah, right. Um, I think a big reason why I am so comfortable living here in Japan mm -hmm. is because I moved so like well, I didn't physically move, but mm -hmm. I moved schools like districts, so many yeah. times that I had to constantly restart relationships. Yeah. And um on one hand, I'm very good at making friends. Mm -hmm. I have no, I could go into a room of people I don't know and come out mm -hmm. with a friend. Yeah, yeah. It's no problem for me. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of the relationships that I form tend to be really shallow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not good at forming like deep relationships mm -hmm. with people because I don't really have any experience with that. You know what I mean? Dude, are you describing me or describing yourself? Well, I th I, th I think we both have very yeah. similar situations. Yeah. Um, and I think there there there's a reason why foreigners move to Japan. Yeah. And I'm not talking about people who move here because their work transferred them mm -hmm. here. I'm talking about people who actively choose who to move to Japan. To live here. Yeah. Um, I think by and large, a majority of the people are in similar situations as we were. Yeah. Where it's like, it's not not necessarily that I felt uncomfortable living in america but it's i didn't have any problem removing my attachments yeah, yeah. you know yeah well, i mean so like like in my situation right so like i went to i went to um kindergarten and first couple years in 
Germ in Germany mm -hmm. and kindergarten was I was the foreigner and people were like why are you here yeah and then I went to elementary school where every year everyone moves so yeah. you have to make new friends every year yeah and then I moved to the states and then the next year I moved to a different school district mm. then the next year I moved to a different school district yeah then after three years I moved to another school district right yeah and that really has set me up to being like you know for for up until probably about um seventh grade mm -hmm. i really tried to make friends and try to integrate myself with yeah. the people around me and i realized that that's just not going to work because i am so different from other people and so it was really like around the time when i was 11 around the time when i started actually drawing manga and anime and started getting interested in japan was yeah. i was like you know what i'm going to stop trying to integrate myself in this community because it's impossible. I'm just going to go do my own thing and try to handle my thing on my own, you know? Yeah. And even in high school, you know, it's funny because like in high school, a lot of people, you know, they have an image of who you are like, oh, this guy is this kind of a person or this yeah. guy's a jock or this guy's a nerd. But when yeah. people would talk about me, they're like, yeah, Ar Arthur's like, I don't know who he is. Like he's, he's a Christian dude, but he's like, he's, he speaks Asian. <laughs> and, and I don't really know what to make of Arthur. Like people, I was just this yeah. like question mark for everyone, right? Yeah. And so like for me, living in a place where I am always like the anomaly, the, the un, for lack of a better word, unnaturally, unnatural person, like, yeah, this is just my <clears throat> element, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's so funny how, uh, so you and I are very similar, but in some ways we're complete yeah. opposites. Um, so in, in some ways how like you kind of attaching to Japan mm -hmm. kind of set you apart for me, it's like the complete opposite. Yeah. Um, so on the West coast, we, we tend to have like a much higher Asian population oh, yeah, for sure. than, than on the East coast. Like it's not even comparable. Yeah. Um, and so for me, attaching to Japanese culture was kind of a way that I would get integrated into groups because a lot oh. of my school when I was in high school uh, I would say probably if you're looking at like race demographics it was like probably 55% white and maybe 30 to 40% Asian yeah right and um, so uh, we had two Japanese so one one first generation Japanese mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. whose parents were from Japan and he was uh, American. Yeah. So he was the first American in his family. We had uh, another girl who her whole family was Japanese, but um, they were like fifth generation. Okay, they they've been they've been in America for a long mm -hmm. time. And then um, we had one more. We had two students who were half Japanese. Mm -hmm. So it's like their parents. One of the like either their mom or dad was from Japan, mm -hmm. and then their their other mom or dad was American, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we had like a, we had a ton of Filipino students. We had a ton of Vietnamese mm -hmm. students, uh, some Chinese, the list goes on. Right. Um, and so for me, like attaching to like Asian culture, but more specifically mm -hmm. Japanese culture was like a way for me to like make friends yeah, cause there's, at my there's school. There's a lot of like Asian Americans. You yeah. Know? Like I remember, so my sister, um, Cause you know, I, I come from Boston, but I went to school in Seattle and she's yeah. like, Arthur, why are all your friends Asian? Yeah. Like my parents asked me the same thing. Why are all your friends Asian? And then when my sister came to UW to visit me mm -hmm. and she went to the library and she looked around and she realized, oh, I'm the only white person yeah. in this room. She's like, oh, now I understand why you, yeah. you have you're friends with all these Asian so, people. So it's like, you know, in many ways, like, uh, I, I know there's, I know there's like a whole thing with like race issues going on like in america mm -hmm. for that that's such a foreign concept to me mm -hmm. because i mean you go to seattle and it's like <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's like yeah I, i'm i'm sure if you looked at the demographics of seattle it's probably still majority white people mm -hmm. living there but it doesn't feel like it yeah it doesn't feel like it um like you know going back at my school it's like it at least half of the students at my school were asian mm -hmm. so it's yeah, like right it was such a normal thing for me to like feel like mm -hmm. I I wasn't I wasn't the majority representative yeah, here right. that like when I moved to Japan, you know I've had a lot of people come up and talk to me. It's like, what's it like being just like a white guy living in Japan? Like, 
you know, don't don't you feel weird that, that like no one looks like you? And it's like I don't know, like it's know, not it's a big g- deal for me. Yeah, it's kind of like what I'm used to. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, dude, is it, this is this is weird. I didn't know we had that, especially yeah. the fart story. I <laughs> had to do the no fart story. We <laughs> that's with Man, that's the first time I've actually publicly talked about that. Oh, story. really? Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you talked about that because Just we get could it bond off my over chest. That <laughs> yeah, but I think we've we've. Oh wow, this is like empty. We now, we right? have yeah. I'm I'm kind of waiting for you to open the next bottle. I'm sorry. We'll we'll do that later. But first, we need to get lunch, man. Yeah, that's fair. All right, see ya. Yep.